For the last seven years, researchers at the Prakash Lab at Stanford University have sampled rocks, algae mats, and ocean reefs in search of a tiny and mysterious multicellular organism called Trichoplax. Trichoplax is a species of Placozoa, the simplest animals at the base of the tree of life. They don't have a nervous system, making them living fossils from a critical time in life's evolution. When researchers looked at Trichoplax under a microscope, they were shocked to see its millions of cells engaged in complex activity. Trichoplax was able to coordinate its movement, strategize how to find food, and even reproduce by ripping itself in two. But how can Trichoplax exhibit these complex behaviors without a brain to call the shots? The answer could shed light on the origins of the nervous system. Traditionally, when you think about intelligence, you think of the brain. Trechoplax stretches that intuition, stretches your imagination to ask how intelligent can a collection of cells with no neurons, no muscles, actually be? How much intelligence can a mechanical collective embody? To answer these questions, the researchers tried to understand the simple mechanics of the trichoplax, starting with the tiny waving filaments called cilia. Cilia I have often described as uh, the atom of motility. For the last 50 years of the work in uh, ciliary biology and ciliary biophysics, we have thought of cilia as an actuator that enables swimming. Typically in organisms with nerves and muscles, cilia help move fluids within the body. But when the Prakash lab studied the cilia on the underside of the trichoplex, they discovered something unexpected. I explicitly remember a moment when we started imaging the organism and literally watch the cilia. What we observed was a walking gait. And the realization was that the organism does not swim, it actually walks. The researchers designed a mathematical model to measure the orientation, height, and beat frequency of each individual cilium as it balanced torque from its neighboring cells with the force of its attachment to the surface below. The result was a regular pattern of locomotion that the researchers called walking. As they walked, these cilia cells exhibited dynamics similar to those seen in individual neurons. When you stimulate the neuron with a voltage, it executes a spike, and that spike passes information through the network. Similarly, what we find in this mechanical system of a walking cilia, where just the right pull in the right direction leads to a transition of a cilia from a stall state to a walking state, and it actually suddenly starts firing in the sense that it starts walking. But just how these individual cilia cells coordinated their movement remained a mystery. We started to characterize our work as asking the question, how do you walk with a million legs? How can many of these cilia work together? When the researchers looked at all the ciliated cells at once, they saw something they never thought was possible. The cilia synchronized their movement like a flock of birds. To literally be able to watch uh, this kind of what we end up describing as a flocking dynamics was surreal because you could see it. And you know, when I see bird flocks, I can imagine, aha, there is a controller, there is a brain in there that's making these sets of decisions. Here we are talking about individual flocks of these in cilia that are seemingly just connected by springs and twirling in remarkably organic ways. You can think about this coordinated activity like a group of caster wheels attached by springs. Even if they start off facing in different directions, a force applied to the system will eventually reorient each individual wheel so that they all point in the same direction and the system travels as a whole. Similarly, each ciliated cell in the trichoplax bounces up against its neighboring cells in a dance between responsiveness and stability. Individual cells, the researchers found, could self-assemble into collective systems capable of a wide range of behaviors, including some that allowed them to be responsive to their environment. In other words, basic mechanics could give rise to the kind of incredibly complex behavior we normally expect from brains. The observation of trachoplex's ciliary flocking really brought to the fore for us this idea that mechanical 
systems could somehow be intelligent. They could somehow seek out food. They could somehow come to consensus across many cells. And they could somehow find ways to keep an organism alive as a whole instead of just its individual parts. Trichoplax may have set the stage for the rise of animals with nervous systems by taking an important first step, embodying simple mechanics that work together to produce complexity. One of the implications of our work is that it really has pulled us in new directions as we think about computation and intelligence in physical matter. We want to make soft robotic self-oscillators. We want to make caster robots that come to consensus and work together to make cargo transport. And we want to think about how we can use these internal dynamics to make predictive machines. And that is very exciting notion because we have built an entire world out of passive materials. What if these materials had just the tiniest sliver of so-called intelligence?